Welcome to Work Table Wednesday with Dream and Color 72207.com. Today we're going to be making a scrapbook page and we're going to be working with Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, So Saffron, and Daffodil Delight. The stamp set will be Watercolor Shapes, which is a, follow is a photopolymer stamp set from Stampin' Up! and it contains nine images. There are two squares, three rectangles, two circles, two ovals. We're going to be using all of the shapes but the ovals today. With using the four colors of ink that I mentioned and using primary and secondary or stamping off and first image stamping, we'll end up with eight different shades of purple and gold. Now purple and gold are my son's high school colors and this is his 11th grade portrait. And so I decided this would be the one of the things that we'll use today to work with this set of stamps. Now you see me putting a package of paper and removing it. Um, because this is a photopolymer stamp, it needs some padding behind it to make sure you have a good image. Now one of the other things I want to mention is I'm actually doing this to create my own background for the 12 by 12 stamp uh, scrapbook page. And so I turn the paper every opportunity I get um, turn it at least a quarter of a turn so that I don't end up with any sort of pattern. This way it helps make looks it makes it look very random. So as I've mentioned I've started with the largest circle and I'm going to start with both the gorgeous grape first and second generation stamping and then I come back with the mango melody to do the same thing. And now you'll like I said you see me putting the package of paper behind it every once in a while and then I'm turning the paper. You know these stamp sets like this sometimes you look at that and think gosh there's not much there to it. Well actually these are what I call architectural stamps and I love them because you can build things with them and because these are distinctive stamp sets which means that they have shading built into them based on the way the artwork is created. You do get your own sort of shading uh, within it. So you don't get a, an opaque image every time you stamp. Therefore, you're able, as you add different layers and different shapes, you're able to add color on top of each other and really create a nice look. So at this point, you're gonna see me coming in <clears throat> At this point, you're going to see me coming in with the Highland Heather using the largest or the larger of the, I guess it would be the largest of the rectangles. There are three rectangles. And you'll notice that the second generation of the Gorgeous Grape looks a little bit like the first generation of Highland Heather at this angle and from this distance. But when you look at the paper close up, when you finish this project, you'll see that it is not the same. And you know the, the beauty of this is that it isn't necessarily, you don't have to use this particular set of colors. You know I'm using this because these are the school colors. At the end of the video I'll show you some other projects that I made for some cards using some of the smaller shapes that'll give you some different ideas on how you can approach building your colors and building your layers. Again, we're using the first and second generation stamping to add a number of layers and it really provides some depth to the page. Now you see me there wiping off and trying to clean my stamps between each use. You know, it's very important when you're using uh, the non-monochromatic colors. So for instance, when I go between my purples and my golds, I need to make sure that I'm rinsing or cleaning off the stamp set adequately. Now, <clears throat> something to bear in mind when you are stamping like this is that when you are stamping on top of things, like I'm doing here, sometimes your original image has not completely dried. And so when you put your stamp down with ink on it, you might pick up colors that have been previously stamped. And you'll see in a minute that that happens with one of the gold, I can't remember what shape it is, but one of them I pick up uh, when I stamp on top of the purple, I pick up some of the purple on my gold image. 
so I had to go back and restamp that particular piece but with these layers you can do that and the photopolymers are see-through so you can line them up pretty easily now all you see me doing here is simply adding <clears throat> Pardon me. All you see here is me simply adding the different shapes. And I started with the largest shapes and I'm working down to the smallest shapes. That does allow you to make sure that your larger shapes are in the page and balanced where you want them. And then you come in and use the smaller shapes to simply fill in between them. And like I said, there is no rhyme or reason. You can see that there is no rhyme or reason here. Uh, I'm still filling in with the, the squares and I'll be coming back and working with the smaller circle as well as the smaller two triangles um, and the beauty of something like this is you can see there there is no wrong way to do it it's just where I think something needs to go in and you know two colors gives you uh, when you do two colors with first and second generation stamping you double your colors and so the more colors you have to start with whether you're doing you know first and second generation that allows you to have some variety and to give you some depth of color now uh, what you're going to see here is again you're going to see me in places I'm not necessarily turning the paper between every stamped image. Sometimes I'm turning the paper, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm turning the stamp and not the paper. Simply to give, um, like I said, some variety to the page. So we have a couple more shapes to go through. And I really think this is a fun set, set to use. And like I said, with the two, with these three large shapes, the large circle, the square, and the rectangle, you can make it um, to the scale of a 12 by 12 scrapbook page. Then with the smaller shapes that we'll talk about uh, at the very end of the video, you can come in and make this much more scaled to a card front. Or you could always use it simply as, um, you could use all of these as a card front that it's a lot there's a lot going on and you've got a lot of paper there but it's it's doable and you can simply cut this into uh, you know when you finish with this if you wanted to make card fronts out of it simply cut it into four inch strips and then cut your strips into six inches and so you actually have six card fronts like that four by six you'll want to come back and trim that last six inches down to five and a quarter so that it fits the standard quarter sheet card that we use uh, and that's actually a good thing to do with a lot of your background and a lot of your designer series paper and you'll see where I've used that technique to create some card bases or card fronts when we get to the end of the video and like I said we're we're getting close we're getting very close um, and the other thing is I want you to notice is that I did not do a lot to line up to make sure this is plumb. I'm just eyeballing it because it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, that's one of the things I like doing about this is that it, it doesn't have to be perfect so I can just add in color where I want to. This reminds me of the um, there used to be acrylic colored acrylic blocks I think from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and in their gift pack in their uh, gift catalog they sold I think six of these acrylic blocks that you could stack to make different colors and I always thought those would be fun set to have I didn't know what I would do with them but I always thought it'd be a fun set to have needless to say okay so we're getting close to being finished with the background and so <clears throat> because these are all of the Stampin' Up! colors, the four colors that I mentioned earlier, I have corresponding cardstock that matches those colors. And I'm going to use that to mat the photo of Benjamin. And you'll see that again, I'm not cutting into whole sheets of cardstock to mat this. I am going to take scraps of the So Saffron, the Gorgeous Grape, 
Mango Melon Medley and the Highland Heather to create a multi-layer mat and then at the very end I'll mat the whole thing on a piece of basic white to give it a little bit of separation from the page. You know when you've got something like this you can vary the depth of each of your mats and also you don't have to be perfectly the same on all edges. Now my OCD wants me to have everything completely and totally even on all four edges but on this particular layout you'll see that the So Saffron layer I inched everything up to one end and then on the mango medley layer it's not quite wide enough to do everything but to create the image that I wanted to create you'll see how it gets stacked in there okay so the other thing to remember is that uh, you can always add layers with dimensionals right now I'm simply using the stamp and seal to layer everything in and again I'm eyeballing it and then um, looking at that and saying okay well it's not quite wide enough so let's just go ahead and lay it on there and I'll cut three sides to, to mat to match the matting and that's going to leave me with a piece that's not quite exactly perfect but I'm going to stick it on this last piece of Highland Heather and I figured out that that side wasn't straight so I do like my sides to be straight so I had to trim it or move change which side I was going to orient the photo and then trim the page appropriately and then I had to move it over to my big trimmer because the small trimmer from Stampin' Up! only goes to six inches okay now at this point is when I decided I needed to put a piece of white between the matted photo and the 12 by 12 background paper simply to give it a little bit of separation from the page and in this particular instance I will grab a whole sheet of 12 by 12 basic white because that was the packet that was available most readily available under my desk and so I will mat this uh, on the white using dimensionals now when you use your dimensionals one of the things that one of the tricks that we have is grabbing your take a pick tool and using the pointy end and you can use that to easily remove the backs of your dimensionals and if you get going in the right rhythm you can really pop them off quickly the best thing I like about it is the backs stay on the end of the pointy tip the, the pointy tip and aren't going all over my, my craft room because I've been known to end up with dimensional backing on my feet down the hall downstairs on the dog outside you name it and I've got it on there okay so once again we're going to use the large trimmer trim the paper down and now the photo is ready to go on the page now I'm going to put it towards the a little towards the bottom right simply because that's just where I like to put things and you can see that there was a piece that I wanted to cover up that I didn't like the way it had stamped and so I just turned the paper to make it match now I've taken a piece of the gorgeous grape and I decided it was time to label this and sometimes I do a stamped label sometimes I'll do a stamped title I'll sometimes use my Cricut and make an ornate title but this time I had a piece of gorgeous grape on the paper on the page and I said you know what I'm just going to hand letter it all I wrote in there was fall 2018 11th grade in Catholic high school you'll notice if you were, if you noticed you might have seen me start it and then I flipped it over because as we know every piece of paper has two sides so I've got that ready to go but then I looked at it and realized it was still rather dark and I didn't like how dark it was against his suit jacket so <clears throat> I decided to freehand mat this on a piece of white cardstock and all I've done again is take it and I've made the fishtail already so in the small trimmer I'm going to come over here and just trim the page like that and then trim it down again and then I'm just going to take my scissors and echo the fishtail point now the photo is matted on dimensionals and so when I stack my dimensionals on top of that I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of the flag but I realized that 
my photo is already on dimensionals and so on the left end of the flag I need to go ahead and put two layers of dimensionals and that's a super easy way to add height and depth all you do is you take you apply your first one you take the backing off and then you apply the second one on top of it and it stacks them up perfectly and so now you can see well and you have to make sure you get the backing off of all of them so now the paper the page excuse me the photo has some separation from the page and there's comes a close-up of the page and you can see the stacking and you can see the variation in the colors so this is one way you can use this this is what my desk looked like when i finished crafting today here's a piece where i used the circle and merely stamped it on designer series paper and then i used the square to make a no layer mat i'm using poppy parade daffodil delight and night of navy to make that one and you'll see these colors and each of these are done the same way this is my favorite one i have to say and then i used the very end i made one somewhat patriotic and used the gold um, what's that called gilding so thanks for joining me tonight i appreciate it and please come back and comment and spread this video thanks a lot